Welcome and thank you everyone for joining today's webinar with Leo Tillman, a leading expert on strategic risk and finance and a long-time long advisor to major companies. My name is Jane Sidar. I'm a co-founder and chief executive officer of Global Longs, the world's first real-time expert network with over 10,000 experts in 160 countries. As the COVID-19 crisis continues to unfold, People everywhere are feeling its effects. Political leaders are struggling to effectively manage responses to this public health crisis. Industrial leaders are dealing with the massive transformations in their sectors to deal with the changing consumer habits and manage a volatile economy. And most importantly, families are struggling to stay healthy and financially stable. To address many of the business, industry, and policy questions surrounding the present and the future of COVID-19, Global Wonks is putting it together a series of webinars led by the leading thinkers or strategic partners, Wongs, advisors to the firm from a number of different sectors and backgrounds who can provide key insights about pressing global region specific and sectoral issues. Today, we are thrilled to have Leo Tillman, one of our own experts on our platform and the founder of Tillman and Company and author of Agility and Financial Darwinism join us today to provide insights and answer questions about how organizations can successfully navigate their way through COVID-19 crisis. Leo Tillman is a leading strategist and prior to founding his namesake strategic advisory firm, he held senior roles at BlackRock and Bear Stearns and taught finance at Columbia University. I had the privilege meeting him last summer and I read this, his book, Agility, How to Navigate the Unknown Seas of Opportunity in a World of Disruption, last November. At that point, we had no idea how our world will be further disrupted. In his book, Tillman and former commander of the North American Aerospace Defense Command, General Chuck Jacoby, argued that building organizations that can effectively mitigate threats and thrive in environments of disruption, uncertainty, and volatility requires agility the capacity to effectively detect, assess, and respond to environmental changes in ways that are purposeful, decisive, and grounded in the will to win. Published in October of 2019, named one of the best 2019 books by the World Economic Forum, their book could not be more timely as the global pandemic has pushed the world into new levels of risk and uncertainty. Uh, Leo, uh, great to have you. Please explain us how you see the economic outlook of the United States and how the concept of agility applies to this particularly precarious moment in our lifetime. And I would love to also remind our audience to jump anytime during the webinar, post your questions on the Q&A panel. Uh, Leo, for instance, do we expect a quick reshape recovery or is that underestimating the complexity fog and friction involved in restarting the economy during the pandemic. There's a huge disparity today between the Main Street and Wall Street. How do we assess that and how should the companies and investors manage this uncertainty alongside financial business operation and cybersecurity risks? Jenk, it's a pleasure to be here. I, uh, I'm, I've been fascinated with this entirely new model that Global Monks has created in analyzing and gathering real real time intelligence so it's very apropos to to our conversation today so you you raise a number of very important issues and i wanted to put them in even broader context we all have been uh responding to this pandemic for about for about seven to eight weeks but the actual science of the pandemic started much earlier uh, we started hearing about this new disease uh, in china at the end of last year, early this year. And then there was a range of conversations, both within companies and governments about what does that mean? Uh, is it going to be serious? What should we do uh, about this, if anything, right now? And then, of course, uh, things intensified. And since then, the vast majority of investors and companies have been in entirely responsive mode, uh, making sure that people are safe and can work from, from home, uh, cutting costs, deferring investments, uh, trying to think what to do with supply chains, uh, et cetera. So we have already gone through this detect, assess, and respond process in the early stages of this pandemic. And, uh, and now we are trying to, concept to conceptualize what's going to happen next. 
So the big task that we talked about in the book is how to help organizations of all kinds, small teams, large companies, governments, armies, navigate disruption and change. That's the big task that all of us are struggling with and everything else is sort of a component of it or a skill of it. Um, when we first started writing this book, we were operating under the assumption that in this new world of intensifying change, arms race of new technologies, geopolitical conflict, societal conflict, our organizations will be faced with all kinds of disruption of different kinds. Sometimes there will be macroeconomic and sometimes there will be financial. Sometimes there will be geopolitical. Now we experience in the one from a biosphere. So, so what is that quality that enables organizations to successfully do this over and over again in very different realms? Uh, to us, it was agility. But the problem was that agility has never been defined or operationalized. It was used as a buzzword in a variety of ways, but nobody have ever rigorously defined that quality and then explained what it takes for any organization to cultivate it. Um, there was uh, quite an intellectual confusion about the difference between agility and other kinds of qualities like resilience or adaptability. And finally, there was a raging discussion about whether this quality is an inboard and you either have it in your DNA, individual or corporate, or you don't. So, so we wanted to really dispel a lot of these myths and make it ultimately practical. So as you said, we defined agility as the organizational capacity to detect, assess, and respond to environmental changes in ways that are purposeful, decisive, and grounded in the will to win. Uh, we will talk about the detect, assess, and respond process in a second as, as it applies to this pandemic. But what is purposefulness? You can't, you can't be agile. You cannot be performing at the highest organizational level if you're not purposeful. And we define purposefulness as both having the both strategic and moral true north. The whole organization must have absolutely no doubt about where we're going, what everybody's role in this strategy is, but also what are the values and standards that unify us as an organization. You cannot achieve cohesion. You cannot achieve the kinds of cultures that we believe are necessary for agility unless you have purposefulness. Decisiveness is the ability to make decisions, both strategically and tactically, and overcome the natural bias for inaction that we have um, as individuals and organizations. And the will to win is an interesting concept, and it extends beyond perseverance. It's really the bias for offense. It's, are you always on the defensive, reacting to events, or trying to preempt them? trying to capitalize on them. Um, so, so all of these components are important and they manifest in themselves as we speak uh, during this pandemic. So I talked a little bit about the fact that we already went through the detect, assess, and respond process when it comes to the very beginning of this pandemic. And now we're finding ourselves in it again. So we think about um, the entire business and economic landscape that is facing organizations and um, everybody else in terms of three distinct categories. The first category is that of risks that surround not just cybersecurity, but surround um, the depth of this upcoming recession or ongoing recession and the shape of the recovery. There's been a long standing narrative that I think is being abandoned as we speak that we will have a V shaped recovery, that we will have a very short deep recession followed by an immediate rebound. And when we thought about it, we, we thought of the Clausewitz theory of war, or that we used extensively in our book as a description of the kind of competitive dynamic environment in which we operate. And key to that theory are the concepts of fog and friction. Fog is an informational ambiguity that we all face at any point in time. We don't, irrespective of how hard we study and learn, uh, there are certain aspects of our landscape that will remain unknown to us. For instance, the path of this recession um, or the path of the pandemic or the path of the recovery. 
So instead of trying to predict the future and bet our entire strategy or organizational balance sheet on that strategy, we need to take a step back and really conceptualize a wide range of potential outcomes because we just don't know. And they range from very deep recession and moderately um, fast recovery to a very deep global almost depression in a very slow recovery. And we are somewhat in, the, in that latter camp. But surrounding these scenarios are really adverse events that could potentially reshape the entire landscape. One of the, one of the concerns we had a couple of months ago when it just began is that irrespective of the fiscal stimulus and monetary stimulus that we see around the world, we will have a global financial crisis that could potentially come out of it as individuals, companies, um, and emerging market economies start to default on their obligations. Same with state and local debt as well. Um, we also have an unprecedented environment where central banks are printing infinite amounts of money. This has never ended well in the history of mankind. So are we going to have an inflationary environment? Are we going to have major moves in currencies? Are we going to have a stagflation? We need to think about a range of these scenarios and make sure that we understand their implications for our company and then create plans about what to do about it. This is only one out of three buckets. The second bucket is a range of uncertainties that we now face as a result of this pandemic. For instance, we could have a profound change in social attitudes and social norms coming of this, uh, out of this pandemic. We could have uh, changes in consumer preferences. We could have completely different ways in which we study and we work. And that will have implications for commercial real estate in organizations, municipal finance, et cetera. We will have acceleration of pre-existing trends of the fourth industrial revolution. And then also all signs point to the fact that this pandemic in and what's happening around it will lead, lead to the continuing rise in nationalism and populism. So all of those things are not even risks, they're true uncertainties, nighty and uncertainties as economics and finance folks would, would describe it. Um, we cannot measure the likelihoods of them because they're knowable, and yet we need to conceptualize what they mean and incorporate it into our strategy, into our planning, et cetera. And all of this, of course, is set in this global environment of persistent conflict that is likely to intensify. So when we think about the entire landscape, we think about these three categories and what they require, they require what we describe as a continuous fight for risk intelligence. We need to continuously study our environment and very quickly be able to dis decide which scenario across risk across uncertainties, across geopolitics, is realizing so we can deploy our existing capabilities and plans and react to it. And this is a continuous, continuous process where we detect what's happening, we rigorously assess, and then we respond. I will, I will leave it on, on a somewhat different note, but which is equally important. And that is the role of cultures and leadership in this entire process. Because so far we talked about the analytical framework of how we would go and deal with disruption and uncertainty over and over and over again in, in different kinds of um, realms. But also the capabilities, the ability to measure risk, the ability to plan, et cetera. But the moment you start thinking about what this would actually look like, um, within an organization, you very quickly discover that a lot, the success of many of these steps depends on the kinds of leadership and on the kinds of culture that we have. For instance, if our culture punishes bearers of bad news, then the important signals from the very fringes of the markets will never reach important decision makers. If when we debate these highly uncertain, ambiguous uh, signals from the market, if we don't value evidence, if formal authority trumps the pursuit of truth, then we will never get to the true assessment of what it means and what we should be doing. 
And last but not least, unless we have trust, accountability, empowerment within our culture, we won't, won't be able to go and execute in an environment that is this uncertain and this is so risky. So this theory of agility that also would define what this quality means, but then operationalizes it so that any organization can embark on a path toward being more agile is both about knowledge and real time intelligence. It's about the right kinds of capabilities and processes, but it's just as much about leadership and culture that are critical to all of this. So hopefully this uh, sets up the stage for our discussion, and I very much look forward to, to your questions and comments 